What's going on guys? It's Michael Gascon and I'm back again and you may be wondering what is that fellow there doing with that noodle and that poor horse? Well I'm going to tell you, I'm going to show you how to sword fight. Remember, these steeds, empires rose and fell on their back. That means they charged certain death for their riders. Well, I think the problem in today's horsemanship is not that we're asking too much, it's that nobody's asking enough. They used to charge certain death. They used to take us to our young ones to and from school and to town and back pulling a carriage full of all of our goods. And now we take them everywhere and we don't ask anything of them. So today, I wanna to show you how to sword fight. Again, $1 noodles because horse trainers are broke. You get you and the, the little <laughs> rag em tag em crew of individuals that you have around, the, the local neighborhood kids to come fight with you. And what this is gonna do is, again, it's just desensitizing that horse. It's just getting that horse where he's set and ready uh, for the unexpected because that's where people get hurt people don't get hurt on untrained horses because when you have to tie a horse snub them up to a tree and you have to blindfold them to get on their back very few people in the world want to ride that horse okay but when you go and you buy a horse that's supposed to ride or rides already you expect for it to just work well this is going to really prepare the horse to work under any circumstance and a lot of times the bet the worst thing that a great horseman does is ride great all the time they ride perfect, they ride, they do everything not to set the horse off. I was raised in an industry like that in the show ring where I would do whatever it took to make the horse look broke. Now I want the horse to be broke and the way that I do that is make them uncomfortable. Couple tips in this, very similar to playing soccer games, there's gonna be unexpected changes of momentum. Um, you're gonna get whacked, the horse is gonna get whacked, everybody's gonna get whacked. You really, you're aiming for other people and you wanna crack them in the head, bop them on the head like bunny foo foo. Uh, but everybody's gonna get touched up by this noodle. So you wanna be sitting back on your pockets and you wanna have your feet down in your stirrups and you wanna redirect to whatever they're afraid of. Whenever you're desensitizing, you desensitize from the ground first. A good rule of thumb whenever you're doing this, keep the rein and the noodle in one hand until you feel like your horse is, is good with it. If they're gonna booger off, if they're gonna have an issue, make sure that the noodle and the rein is in the same hand so that you can have them face their fear like this because just like everything else, whenever we're picking up a rain jacket, whenever we're pulling a tarp, your ability to face them up to their fear, just like everything else we've done in the respect series and the push obstacles is gonna shut down that forward. Once you have that done and the horse is left and right, remember forward is your friend. As we get excited, our hands tend to rise up and all these things and obstacles and push obstacles in horse soccer, um, in the Thunderdome, anything that we do that we're trying to get a reaction out of the horse, remember grabbing all the buttons is not your savior. If a tight rein saved you, I would not have a job. You wanna sit back, give them their face so you can give crystal clear communication, left, right, forward. Left, right, forward. And deciding which way to pull them is very dependent upon which way they go. If they move away from the camera like this, I would pull this horse back and have him face back up to, to my beautiful camera woman. Okay, so once you have that done, basically you're just gonna go around and just whack people. And that's really the name of the game. And you're sitting back and you're ready. See all those unexpected changes of momentum? And that horse is boogering off. We do this at all of our retreats and all the all the folks ride, all the folks ride with all their horses. And a lot of times these ladies at the retreats, they're riding horses that they have a hard time walking to the round pen on day one. And by the end of the retreat, they're playing horse soccer. Guiding your horses first, sword fighting a second. A lot of times this will turn into a game of cat and mouse. Somebody will eventually lose their noodle. So remember, 60, all these horses are 60 days or under or problems if they're old. The horse that Miss Maggie is on over there, it was really explosive whenever he came, oh wit, the Rocky Mountain right there. And look how she just redirects him towards the energy and the action. Miss Cat is on a 60 day colt start. Miss Betsy over here is on a 60 day colt start. Look when her colt spooks, how she just redirects him. So it's never an issue for him to really do anything or buck or run away. Miss Crystal here, she's on a Frisian Arabian that 
looking at his own shadow, he would run away. And look at him now, since instead of us trying to hold him in one place and make him do it, we just keep redirecting him and giving him the option. Look at how all these cults, they're just accepting it. Basically, you're giving them an option that they can't refuse because <laughs> you're redirecting them and redirecting them to whatever they're afraid to the point that they don't try to booger off because they can't argue with one rein. Where people mess up is they sit too far forward and they grab too much reins, and when the horse gets scared of something, they have energy and motion going somewhere, and that motion, that energy and motion all gets capped off whenever you grab the reins, and that's what's gonna get the buck. That's what's gonna get the rear. That's what's gonna get the runaway. They grab your reins and, and take off with you. If you can have the wherewithal in your mind and you start building your seat where you can sit back and redirect them towards the action, you can do the most ridiculous things. You can sword fight like we do. You can go roping, you can go shooting. Uh, anything that you can think of, you can go sort cows. Anything that you wanna do, if you can control the head, you can control the horse. And you see us being able to redirect them towards that fear. I'm talking about in this group of horses, there are some horses that when they came, they were really explosive. This Mustang, he came in undomesticated. I mean, absolutely wanted to booger off from everything because of course he's a prey animal. But our ability to redirect them and him realizing, wait a second, Though it's loud, it's scary, it touches them, all the stuff, none of it hurts. And over the course of the 60 days, we've created a bond together where he realizes, okay, you're not going to get me hurt. You're not going to let the, the mud eat me. You're not going to let the obstacles eat me. You're, even if I go into a sword fight with you, you're going to take care of me. And that's the ideology that we want our horses having. And the more you build that, the less time that you have to spend with the horse to have that kind of bond. When you see people that they, I, I would trust that horse through thick and thin. Usually that means they've been riding that horse for 10 years. And over the course of 10 years, there's been some unfortunate situations and the horse has proved to be a, a good horse. Instead of needing that 10 years, if you start putting them in situations where you can see that they're mentally uncomfortable, but we're dictating that we're in good footing, we're inside of an arena, we're inside of a round pen, we're in a field with, with good footing, and we can redirect them and show them the answer, that's really going to build your confidence in your horse and what you're riding right now. You do this for, for two, three, four days, you going out into the trail and a bicycle coming around is not going to be a big deal. You're, oh yeah, that's adorable. Face up. As soon as you face up, then the horse isn't doing anything funky and the horse already knows, well, I can't get away, I can't buck, can't run, so let me just go where you're asking me and I know that you're not going to let me get hurt. If you stick to these few guidelines and get creative, I mean, we like to sword fight, play soccer, uh, chase cows, stuff like that, shoot guns. That's how we like to desensitize horses, but you can be as creative as you want to as long as, especially early on, you have good footing, what I mean, no holes, no roots, no, and you can redirect anything they're afraid of. If you can take their face from them and take their butt from them and face back up to it, that's gonna cut all that energy, all that motion. When a car breaks down, it doesn't go. When a horse breaks down, it doesn't whoa. Motion is where you get in trouble. So if you can shut that off, not by stopping them, but by redirecting them towards the action, you're gonna feel a lot more confident, a lot safer, and you're gonna build that muscle memory that you'll know what to do whenever you're under distress. If you stick to these lines, I'm telling you, it's gonna change your horsemanship experience. Well, thank you guys so much. I'll see you in the next video.